hi everyone welcome back to sherry approved i hope you guys are doing well and even if you didn't have such a great week last week i really pray and hope that this new week is going to be really you know better for you have a positive mindset just keep hope alive and you know what things are going to get better i know for me this week was a little bit tough because my sinuses started to act up like nobody's business i don't know if it's a change of weather or something here um but yeah i was dealing with a sinus headache sinus pain and so on so today i am just so happy that i'm feeling a lot better and you know what we could get down to business so today's video i actually wasn't going to do um, because i feel that there's a lot of information out there on this topic but i've been getting a lot of messages and people have been asking me um and while i've been sharing resources and so on i said okay fine let me do it and today we are going to be talking about maskne or mask acne or the clinical term which is acne mechanica so we will start first by talking about what is actually acne mechanica and this it's so difficult for me to say mask knee <laughs> it's like mask and acne together which is like a term i don't know who coined it um but yeah literally it is something that has been bothering a lot of people simply because covid19 brought about a whole ton of new breakouts for a lot of us now some people may have been getting extra breakouts during this whole coronavirus season for the reason of actually stress and anxiety because you have no idea what stress and anxiety does in your body in terms of what it triggers and the responses and acne actually could be one of them. So a lot of people were dealing with all kinds of things happening with their skin simply because of that. But then and now across the world, governments are implementing measures where we need to wear masks and wear them um, in order to conduct our everyday business. Now, even before a lot of us, like I am not a healthcare professional, but a lot of people who would have been frontline workers, for example, um, whether they are direct doctors and nurses or people who have been supporting the whole effort and the fight on the front line, those people would have been wearing masks already on a daily basis. And a lot of them would be already experiencing this issue, acne mechanica. So what it really is, is because it's actually, and it's not just masks, but in this case, it is because of the mask. It is where there are breakouts, pimples, acnes because of rubbing or friction or touching or because simply the thing that is on the body is creating literally an occlusive effect and therefore it provides a lovely spot for bacteria to multiply and stay trapped so because there is this mask that's over your face it's literally trapping everything in there remember when you're speaking and so on there's moisture that's gathering within that mask and so on and everything is basically against your skin and that mask literally locks everything in and therefore even sometimes the friction of the mask against your skin can actually put micro tears into the skin and actually cause that bacteria lovely passage to get in. So it will affect different people in different ways. In fact, this issue of acne mechanica is something that a lot of acne, um, athletes actually deal with because of um, they get it not just on their face, but they get in other parts of their body where they have to put on protective gear. Um, some of you may actually be having acne mechanica where your bra is and your bra strap or sometimes on your back or maybe even because of gym clothes and so on, things that are staying on and trapping dirt against your skin. And of course, like I said, it will affect some people differently. So some people are more prone than others, you know. Um, so it just depends on you. But it might just be happening now because you're going to have to be wearing a mask and because we are wearing it for long periods. So what does it look like? Now, first of all, and I'm focusing specifically on mask acne or mask knee, right? In this case, because where you're putting your mask, your mask is going to come from this area and it's going to go across and cover your mouth and your cheek area so if all of a sudden you notice that after a few days or a couple of weeks that you've been doing this that listen i am having breakouts that is not usual no breakouts have a lot of causes but it could it very well might be the mask right so you will notice it happening out sometimes on the bridge of the nose on the cheeks and the jaw area in this area and a lot of us we know that when we get breakouts on our jaw area it's sometimes connected to hormonal imbalances but it actually might be your mask just in case it's not something that you're usually accustomed to but all of a sudden it's happening that might be the issue so how do they what do they look like for some people they may look like like little red bumps that comes up on the skin, especially fairer skin tones. It may show up. You may see that redness. Um, for some of us, it may be little things that come on the skin and you see like a little bit of white um, inflammation or something. Um, they usually appear like that as opposed to like deep cystic acne. Um, generally, the 
um, acne mechanica or the acne you'd get from mask wouldn't necessarily be the deep ones unless sometimes you're already acne prone and this is actually just exacerbating the situation but in most cases it's going to be at the surface but it can actually be plentiful so you may see a lot on the cheek area a lot on your jaw and on top your nose bridge right so that is ex it is what it looks like now this is the thing what can you do now let me put my disclaimer here like i usually do i am not a dermatologist i'm not an esthetician i am just somebody who i stay abreast i do follow um dermatologists i do read and study a lot of dermatology studies and so on so like i always say take what i say with a pinch of salt always go check it out always do your research i'm just giving you a couple tips that might just help you if this is what you are experiencing so the first thing is you need to be wary about your cleansing cleansing is going to be really really important because remember we're talking about extra dirt extra bacteria and so on that is getting trapped and staying against your skin for a great number of hours so cleansing is going to be really really important i know you probably do it but the difference is that you want to make sure that that cleansing is not harsh that it is actually gentle and when i say not harsh like right now will not be the best time to actually engage those physical scrubs you might want to put those aside a little bit. Why? Because especially with acne mechanica, we are focused on protecting skin barrier. And I'll talk a little bit about that just now. But yeah, you want to make sure that you cleanse. You cleanse regularly, meaning you cleanse morning and evening. Um, You cleanse before. You, in fact, you should cleanse before you put on your mask. And when you remove it, that's a really good time to cleanse as well, especially if you've been wearing it for a few hours. But you want to make sure that you use a gentle cleanser. So nothing with all this exfoliating beads and so on. You really don't want to do that. And if you are using one, make sure it's one that is extremely, extremely gentle. Reason being is because remember the mask has already created friction on your face and you don't want to exacerbate that problem or cause your skin to be like, ah, what's going on, right? So yes. So like I was saying, skin barrier is going to be really, 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 really important. I made some notes here because i don't want to forget anything as usual right so what is your skin barrier as we're on that topic and before we continue with the rest of the points um or the things that you should be mindful of if you are experiencing this is that on the surface of your skin the the upper epidermis is there to protect you what it does is it helps to hold moisture and the things that you want in your skin and it's there to make sure that the things that you don't want in your skin stays out so it protects you it protects from bacteria and dirt and pollution and all those things it will basically reject it and that's why having a healthy skin barrier is so so important once your skin barrier is compromised it means that you don't have that natural protection natural way our bodies were created to protect what's below the top part of our skin we lose it literally so um what happens is that therefore anything that hits your skin has free passage or free reign to get in and then you also don't have that barrier which is able to lock in moisture and lock in hydration and lock in the things that you actually need you also don't have that so therefore those things that you should have in your skin escapes and that's why it's so important to make sure that your skin barrier is healthy so especially if you're having acne mechanica it's going to be really really important that you focus on protecting your skin barrier now the second thing is treating because obviously you're going to have these breakouts and the thing is anybody nobody wants breakouts nobody wants to have it right especially for people who are accustomed to acne but if you are not like all of a sudden and you're having breakouts you're like oh my gosh what can i do um and most dermatologists that i read recommend using salicylic acid to treat this um some also recommend benzoyl peroxide actually so some people respond better to one or the other um you can try and see now there are actually a lot of cleansers with salicylic acid which might be the way you can get it in and get it in a little bit more gently at this point Point in time so maybe you can rotate a salicylic acid cleanser with another cleanser in between or you could actually choose to use an salicylic treatment so there are a lot of on the spot treatments that you could get at the drugstore i know neutrogena has dr sheffield's i think is a benzoyl peroxide if i'm wrong but there are a lot of like acne spot treatments um that you can use the key with those though is that depending on the formulation they can be very very drying so the ordinary has one that's a two percent salicylic solution which is really good and of course you all know my favorite which is the coste baja that's a four percent salicylic solution so it's even stronger but again the thing about salicylic is that it's going to penetrate the pore it's able to dig dig into all of the stuff and go in 
get all that bacteria get all that oil or that sebum which is what you wanted to do and treat so that's how come the breakouts and the pimples start to go down the key is depending on the formulation if it's going if it's drying out your skin you want to skip maybe every other day or the important thing is that you have to hydrate and moisturize on top of it right so whether you're going to use salicylic or ben, um, benzoyl peroxide it's up to you based on your skin and what you are custom um, or what you get results with but yeah that's what you're going to have to bring in at this point in time so as i just hinted the third thing you need to take into consideration or you have to do is hydrate and hydration is going to be really really key right now because again the, the wearing of the masks naturally is interfering with the skin barrier because of that rubbing, that friction, that, you know, um, literally staying in that particular place and not moving or just having very uh, rough contact with your skin. Um, and that's why you want to make sure that you hydrate well. So make sure that you use hydrating products, a hydrating donor. Um, right now, if you have hyaluronic acid in a serum form, now is the time to bring it out or in an essence form. Now is the time to bring it out. And let me just remind you that hyaluronic acid could backfire on you if you do not use it properly. Hyaluronic acid binds water to the skin. So therefore, there should be moisture on the skin, water on the skin, so that it could lock in that water into your skin. If there is none, if your skin is dehydrated, and then you use hyaluronic acid the hyaluronic acid will actually pull water from inside your skin and you may have epidermal water loss and you don't want that at all so you want to make sure that when you're hydrating you're hydrating properly so whether it is you're using a hyaluronic acid alone or using just a general a lovely hydrating serum definitely do that because remember you're treating your skin with something that potentially can also dry it out while healing your acne and you want to make sure that you you allow that to happen but in a nice environment um as i'm on that point however when you come when it comes to treating your acne as well there are pimple patches as well which you can also use if you find that you know the other's not giving you enough the pimple patches are actually pretty pretty gentle and they bring what's um in there they bring it up to the surface get it out and then they heal faster as well that just depends on how bad your pimples are you would really need to look at it okay so the next thing which is tip number four is emollients you are going to need to not just hydrate but moisturize. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between hydration and moisturization, which I won't get into now, but you want to make sure that you moisturize your skin really, really good. And therefore, you want to make sure that you have emollient moisturizers. That's emollient creams. Some great ingredients to look for. And the reason why we're talking about emollient creams, again, it's because of your skin barrier. Because once you are putting hydration and you're giving your skin what it needs, you want to make sure that it has the stuff to literally put back what has been lost. And for example, one of those ingredients, and you all know I love this ingredient, and that's ceramides. It's actually one of the reasons why I highly recommend products from CeraVe, um, which are found in a drugstore. They have cleansers, they have moisturizers as well. Their cleanser, which I love, which is my favorite drugstore cleanser, the Foaming Facial Cleanser, um, actually has ceramides. So while you are cleansing your skin, you are actually putting ceramides on your skin. It also has niacinamide, which again is another great ingredient for balancing sebum in the skin and brightening. So ceramides is one of the things that you want to look for in your creams in your serums in um your cleanser in toners they, they're found everywhere but ceramides are like the lipids that are actually found naturally in our skin the things that actually help to build in the skin barrier and that's why that's going to be so important other dermatologists also recommend these types of ingredients seeker so you see, I might not be so crazy after all. I might have an idea of what I'm saying. Sika is Centella Asiatica. I keep talking about this ingredient all the time. And I'm so glad that a lot of Western skincare is now incorporating this thing that the Koreans and those in Asian beauty knew about for years. Um, Centella Asiatica is, again, not only anti-inflammatory, but it also helps to build your skin barrier. And it's wonderful, especially if you're having acne mechanica, because it's going to help soothe the skin, but it's also going to prevent a lovely layer and a lovely barrier on the skin to help again protect your skin because while we are treating we also want to build that protection to prevent this thing from happening 
okay as much as possible other great ingredients jojoba oil squalane oil these are oils that actually mimic again what's naturally found on our skin something called natural um, moisturizing factors as well those are the types of ingredients you want to look for in creams in your moisturizers and especially at night you want to make sure that you use actually a kind of heavier cream than you would use in the day because that's the time when you're going to be able to really really work on that skin barrier and prepare your skin or prep your skin for the next day tip number five and uh, while this should be a given i have to say it and that is to wash your mask change your mask every day please 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 remember that every while you are the only person using it you're speaking you're breathing in today whatever is in your mouth whatever is in your nose is coming out the things that you cannot see are building up there so you really need to wash your mask please you need to change it if you're using disposable ones change it um there, there are different recommendations whether it's every couple hours so it's every day but a lot of us are wearing cloth masks so we definitely don't want to be using the same mask every day unless i guess you washed it the night before and it dried but yeah so you definitely want to change your mask now on the topic of mask though and this is something that i'm still looking into so you remember we talked about silk for your hair and for your face in terms of pillowcase and so on yes so um the same thing applies and it's actually recommended i saw it recommended by recommended by a couple of dermatologists if you can get silk masks now i did have my friend because i have been ordering my ma get to get my masks made and so on i did have my friend try um but we tried with satin and it was really really difficult to breathe so i am actually going to try to see if i can order a silk mask to try it but i know that i've seen that people have said that it is actually it feels nicer on the skin it is cooler as well so that you don't have that heat additional to you know what is happening or creating or making the acne or the pimple breakout situation worse so it's actually cooling on the skin and of course what that does is it keeps um the moisture and stuff away from the skin or the things that will actually cause the acne so yes you're going to have to wear the mask but at least yeah because of the material inside there that's going to help so if anybody has tried a silk mask yet or have or know where you can get one i mean please let me know i know it's available online there are companies but they are not cheap i have seen them like around 30 us dollars for one so that's not so cheap but yeah maybe if you're having this problem it might make sense investing in that because that's going to help um your situation and I have two more tips to share with you. The next one is when it comes to makeup. Now, a lot of us are opting to not go for makeup at all while this whole mask situation is going to... I could completely understand that because, I mean, you know, the mask is covering up most of the scene on your eyes showing. It makes no sense wearing lipstick like I am right now, you know, if you're going to wear a mask. But yeah, if you are going to wear anything, you want to make sure that it's very lightweight. So either very lightweight foundations, lightweight don't necessarily have to mean light coverage. There are some lightweight foundations that you could actually build up, you know, meaning in terms of how it feels and goes on on the skin, that it's not a huge mask of foundation. Or you could up, not for foundation and probably go with a BB cream or with a tinted moisturizer. So you could actually take a moisturizer, get something like the CoverFX um, foundation drops, add something a little bit into your moisturizer and use that to give you a little bit of coverage um, so that it's not going to be something heavy on your skin. Again, these are tips for if this is happening to you or you want to make sure you prevent um, this from happening to you, especially if you're going to be wearing your mask very, very long. And the last tip is while these are recommended um, tips to help treat or you know deal with the acne mechanica situation if it's happening because you're wearing masks if this is persisting for more than 10 to 12 weeks visit your dermatologist if otc products over the counter products are not helping you may need something stronger that a derm may have to recommend so definitely don't just keep trying 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 three four months down the road you don't want to damage your skin any further it's not helping please go see a dermatologist make an appointment and take care of your skin so guys this is going to be the way that it is for a while we're going to have to get used to this and there are a lot of skin irritations that are happening we can't run away from it so let's do as much as possible to protect our skin build our barriers our skin barriers and i'll see you guys in another video take care bye